says, it says it started. On there we go. Page. Now it says it started. Okay. Okie dokie. Um, so first, I think we just want to go through what we have open on user lose it. So I was just going to share the GitHub. Is that okay, Martin? I think it's the right way to do it. I did a little bit of work on it yesterday. And apparently Elliot did as well. But it's it's late for Elliot, so. Yeah. All right. Uh, where, do, where do we want to start? Uh, issues or PRs? Uh, let's do the issues. I think that's probably the best. And some of these we might just decide not to do. OK, newest, oldest, or other way around? Uh, let's do the first one, because I've actually got something to ask on that one. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so I like Elliot points to the middle box of stuff and the crypto stuff in the document and sort of, OK, so he has two concerns, facile and super superfluous. Um, we may disagree on the first point, but uh, I do agree on the second point. Um, and so I've cut that down quite a lot in the mm. pull request that I've got there. Um, one of the things that uh, sort of came out of the discussion with Tolus about this one was that um, this is probably just a distraction from the from the central theme. I think there's an important point to make, which is to recognize that middle boxes are participants in the protocols, even if you don't want them to be. And um, you have to engage with that, that fact. But um, that's the only point that we really really need to make. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if you actually need the term middle boxes all. So there are protocols uh, which have multi more than two at least. And there are also some parties which are just parties participating unintendedly. So that's what we need to say, I think. Yeah. And and that's what the, the pull request essentially does, is it takes the, the one little snippet that, that says that and leaves only that in the um, in the text and then cuts down the remainder of the, um, actually cuts out the cryptography section entirely. I think there's a paragraph in the security mm. considerations that talks about that now. Like, whoop, delete, 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 Ooh. delete. Uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. All right, so David's got right. a point here. I haven't read that yet. Even I'm sleeping. Super protocols can involve more actors than the current. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of the text I wrote, but I think having something in that direction of like, because that, that's what we had in the previous text of if, even if you intend it to be for two parties, they might not be. So keep that in mind. Yeah, I, I see. Um, well, but I mean, is, is that not kind of the point bringing Brought, brought up by the fact that simple protocols can involve more actors than is immediately apparent? Or is that not? It, there's a difference between is apparent and intent, I guess. Um... Any, anyway, um, it, uh, let's let's work on the, on David's text there. And um, for the question that I have is, is this the general direction worth taking? So are you not I, I agree with the general direction. Yeah, definitely. Are you not talking about encryption or cryptography anymore at all, basically? Basically, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess you mentioned it now only as part of, is, it, is this part of invariance now? No, that's the security oh. considerations. Ah, security thanks considerations. to GitHub, yeah. Because I think that's still an important point that in order to, to yeah. protect you from uh, unintended participation, you, you should use encryption where possible. Yeah, it does make that point, but it doesn't make that point as a primary thing. Yes, what, what is what is the rationale um, for in this PR removing that? Um, do you see that? Did you see that as mainly something to do with middle boxes then? I mean, I guess I think it, it it just ended up being a distraction from the from the central point. For me, it's quite central that's... because that's that's only if you if you can. Uh, protect the in the variant parts of your protocol, which is either by doing encryption or using or whatever. Actually, it makes sense to talk about invariance. If you if you don't have any encryption, then there's like you know nothing you can do against ossification. It 
it does say that, but um, the it also recognizes that most of the time the problems that you encounter are the the things you want to talk to anyway, um, and that's really what I wanted to to focus on. Um, so it, the first sentence there from the security consideration sex is controversy can or might be used now. I can change that to a can or some other word if you think that's more appropriate. So I think it should be it should be not only in the security considerations, but still in the main part of the document. But maybe it doesn't need an own section. Yeah, I I would almost be tempted, as I thought this was going to be part of before I expanded things, um, to even just have a mention in even when we talk about invariance. Is it really related to that though? Well, I mean, can, I mean, can you well? Would it be meaningful, really, to document invariance if you didn't have a cryptographic boundary? I guess you could, yes, I think have, so. you could have an unencrypted protocol that just is random orders of things all the time such that people can't really ossify on them too much. It, it may not be as very, it may, it, but it may not be a very effective way to do it. Um, yeah, I think the, um, the the point of invariance is is probably um, and, and Elliot helpful helpfully pointed this out. Going back to RFC 5704, they talked about invariance there, and one of their examples was the IP TTL and what it means. You decrement the TTL every time you forward a packet, and that's yeah. something that a lot of other capabilities in the protocol depend on, and. If, if that does if that invariant is not maintained it's no longer called IP and that's mm -hmm. kind of central to the to the whole thing and that was actually central to the debate that was had at the time of 5704 and and MPTLS MPTLS uh, MPLS um, yeah yeah so yeah, I, mean, I don't think I don't think crypto fits in there yeah, it's meaningful Sorry. to document invariance even if there's no crypto. Um, it, it's not feasible to stop someone messing with them if there's no crypto. Right. No, but I mean, the whole point about so invariants are, are easy because that's the part that can ossify and on is ossified or whatever. But to protect the part that is variable, um, you need something else. And that's like, you know, if you cannot encrypt it, then it's squeezing or use it. If you can encrypt it, then that's another way to protect some of that. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, mean, I would, I think this section would have been fine. Was there actually comments on this specific section? I can put that back. That that crypto section is easy to put back. Yeah, it, maybe, maybe I'm wondering, uh, Barney, if there's another way to put it that doesn't make cryptography the, the key thing that you should do, but could we instead say limit, limit participants? Um, as, as a way to improve this cryptography is one way to do it. But yeah. another way to achieve uh, something that can be extended is limiting participants by having it be in, you know, like only for these, this particular protocol within your limited domain. That's a very popular thing these days, right? Um, that's another way to get the same effect. Like if you're not putting it out on the open internet you know, on, on open routers, you also don't have to have the same types of concerns. Yeah. I mean, there's also degrees of uh, protection, right? I mean, you, you can get a certain level of protection from authenticating, a certain level from uh, authenticating and encrypting, a certain level yeah. from just people don't do that or will slap you on the wrist. Yeah, Yeah, and just to uh, go away from this middle box theme, so it's not about limiting participation, but it's con about controlling who really has access and is an active party here. Mm -hmm. Tommy, you used the word boundary earlier. Isn't that the key point? Like you, yeah. That's that's what cryptography gives you is a boundary, right? So I, I would say uh, I'll add a comment for this. You know, can we remove this removal from this PR, but then <laughs> file a new issue to say, you know, reading cryptography section and clarify? Yeah, actually, looking at the section here, I I, I think we probably just put it back and leave it at that, uh, unless, unless someone's got some suggestions. Well, I, I think. I don't know. What, what do people think about kind of reframing it as, 
you know, put a boundary for participation as opposed to cryptography being the name. Oh, yeah, I could do that. No, a boundary with that, that could be, that could be a new PR. A boundary with cryptography being one way of producing such right. a boundary. So from my perspective, having gone through the issues relatively recently, um, a lot of the rest of these are in the too hard basket for me. So yeah. uh, let's okay. let's go through some of them and see if we can work out what to do with them. Yeah. All right. So this one we have a way forward on. That's good. More analysis needed. Concretely, concretely, what what do we think should be done here, if anything? Yeah, I'm still trying to work out what Elliot's concern is. Yeah. Um, and I haven't read his response. Okay. But um, you can always say more analysis needed uh, to, on anything. It, um, I mean, like, I just had like a very quick look at this issue now, but it seems like it is kind of beyond the scope of the document. So maybe it's again just so that we can remove something from the document to avoid this discussion. It might be. Well, so I guess which is which part of this? Is it just the fact that we're saying that it has proven to be insufficient in practice that is the problem? I think that's probably what's going on. Could you just relax that a little bit and say this is yeah. generally commonly insufficient in practice? Or, or this it. has, in some cases, I mean, just, you know, just, right, I mean, it, it may be sufficient some places, but the problem is it's not a, uh, sufficient everywhere. Um, Yeah, that seems like a reasonable conclusion. I guess he's actually picking on the word proof in here. <laughs> I, I think so. I think that probably th th that's too, um, too assertive a statement to make. Okay. And we can just soften that statement. All right. Um, I'll have a comment in the issue. Okay, that should be relatively straightforward then. All right, and who's this Chris Wood guy? Um, yeah, if we get a pull request, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't mean to keep filing issues without PRs. Um, <laughs> you should close this if there's no PR. <laughs> do, do you expect to be able to have a moment? Should be like a, a very like a one or two line change. So you want to do it while we're on this call? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, Chris. All right, let's do it. I'll, I'll I'll assign you. Alrighty. Get to have walked right into that one. Yep. Okay, so we have this. We did merge a PR about. Moving a lot of stuff to the appendix. Is there, Mary? Is there was there more to do here? This seemed to be mainly about the examples, right? Um, yeah, it was mainly about our samples, examples, and then also I thought there's a little bit more redundancy, but um, 
I didn't look at the latest version if there were more changes. The, okay. the PR was totally fine. Okay. Um, do I mean, we need it's... to keep this open, or I, I, I'm very happy with the action we took from this. So yeah, no, this is definitely a big improvement. Um, I don't think I think the document is fine. It's just like the the shorter and, and crisp it is, I think the better it is. So yeah, maybe just a final review pass at the end will help. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, just keep it in mind. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm going to close that guy then. Yeah, I found the uh, the expansion of the the text on TCP to be pretty good as well. Yeah, that was the only part that I changed. Yep. Okay, then get some that I had filed, and I should probably do something with. Um, let's see. Well, you know, now that we're putting more examples in appendix, I think if anywhere this would belong. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't know, I'm not super enthusiastic about this now, given how we've moved things. Does anyone have a particular opinion? If somebody yeah, wants I, to write I text, probably... we can take it, but. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, good. Great. What? I, I, I think, let's see. Number forty-two. Yeah, I think now that we did some of the work on updating Greece, I'm okay with this. I, I think there, you know, just for just for open discussion for this group, I think there's. It'll be interesting to see how things work out with quick having Greece from the beginning versus adding stuff later, but. I don't think there's going to be anything we can comment here in the document, especially now how we rephrase things um, to say, you know, it's just falsifying it. Use. <laughs> yes. I, I, go ahead. What do you think, Ivan? I was going to say, welcome to the experiment. Uh, we're exactly. we're continuing, <laughs> continuing to experiment on ourselves. And I think from uh, this document has already changed a little bit that um, beginning at the beginning, it was very focused on greasing and now it's more focused on active use, which I think is the right thing to do. And what we say in the document is that greasing has proven to be useful for the DLS, the TLS case where it was added later on, but everything else still has to be proven. So I think like that direction already changed and this is addressed to some extent. Yeah, I'm just gonna, um, for my own tracking, I'm gonna open an issue over in the EDM program side to just say like, hey, look at this and think about it in the future. But I'm going to close this for now. Yeah, there's no lessons we can learn about whether greasing works or doesn't work from TLS or from initial quick deployment. I, I think there are some lessons from the initial quick deployment because uh, we like literally when we added we added greasing to we crashed one of the implementations and that got fixed before we it shipped. So that's that's an example we can mention because that, that got fixed before anything hit production. I don't know if that belongs in this doc though, is what I'm thinking, right? Like I, I think that is a very interesting point. And I want to talk about that more with this group, particularly about like how do we, you know, what type of testing and deployment do we do before we ship the protocol? <laughs> um it's maybe just saying we should apply greasing, you know, in this document, maybe just being clear, you should start greasing even before the initial versions, you know, before the final RFC, you know, do, do it even when you're developing. Yeah, but I mean, using using greasing as a debugging tool and actually building greasing into the protocol is, is two different things, I think. Yeah, the, there was talk, I mean, I wasn't following it that closely, but there was talk about ossification on your know, draft versions of Quick as well so 
you know, m maybe the lesson is start this from from you know, the very early drafts, not not don't try and add it just before the RFC is published. Right. I, I think that's a great thing to do, and I just capture and I'm, I'm typing in those notes into the issue on kind of our program side. Um, and I'm just I'm worried about bloat on this one, and I, I think there's there's a lot of work we can still do talking about you know how do we do the deployment of a protocol within a group. Fair enough. That makes sense to me. Okay. Totally agree. Presence on, okay, great. So we are here. And I think, yeah, coordination, I think this again is going to be something that's going to be more general. Um, so I'm happy to essentially move that over. Yeah. One of the things that we've sort of discovered is that you don't get to do any of this without having a community of people who mm -hmm. actively maintain the protocol and are willing to do things to fix it and improve it. And that's that's maybe a little bit outside the scope of this work. But yeah, no, I, 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 I think we can do follow on discussions, but we're still learning there. We don't, we don't think we know to say it concretely. All right, getting a bit older now, correct or fail. Yeah. Yeah, again, it's a little tricky. Um, yeah, I think we've we've tried a couple of things that work this way, and it's actually a pretty cool design technique, particularly once you have um, crypto in, in the mix. And this is one of those things that we sort of did in, in quick to some extent with um, uh, the way that we did address validation for the handshake, there's no additional overhead. You just encrypt the packets. And if they don't decrypt, then it wasn't legitimate. And that just sort of yeah. falls out by virtue of tying into other things. But it's a design technique. It's not really, um, it's not really central to this. And so I'm, I, I think yep. that I, I don't think we need to mention it. Yeah, not sure if it's a distraction, but now that we have kept the section on cryptography, we could just add a sentence there. Yeah, but then it's it is a distraction, I think, ultimately. Yeah. There's a there's a lot you can talk about in this space, and mostly it's just well, here's a trick. Look at this, isn't it cool? And right. I guess yeah. the way I would phrase it is, do we think there's anything in this section on dependency? that is lacking. And I, I I feel like this ends up just being an example of one way to achieve dependency. But you know, given that we are moving more and more of the examples out of the text and just saying, hey, here's just here's the principle. I'm not sure completely what is lacking in that. I mean, it, it, it's an example of forcing you to read in read the spec rather than go from you know, yeah. CCP dump examples and, and guess, which, which is a, a really useful principle. I'm not sure it's necessarily for this document. Right. Uh, what I was thinking was more not talking about TLS specifically, but more generally um, mm -hmm. having another note saying that cryptography can also help uh, by keeping those documents, uh, those protocols viable, because if you change keys or whatever, then you can detect things quickly. I, I think there's value in the point that, you know, reading the, forcing people to read the spec. However, if you're reading an IAB document, you're already in the reading the spec camp. So that's probably, we don't need this to be in this document if we're trying to keep it crisp and short. Well, I mean, the, 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 right, the audience here is more for like if you're designing the protocol, design your protocol in a way that you, you force people to read your spec instead of copying your diagrams. But I, I agree with your conclusion. Regardless, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I think this one can just kind of park on the side. So good, good discussion, good thoughts, but not, yeah, not to be included. 
to me, it, it, it does sound like an, an interesting enough trick that we should write it down somewhere, but maybe not in this document. Right, right. It's like, ooh, I, I do appreciate it. It's very. Well, it's, you know, IAB you know, job security. We're keeping some ideas for future documents to write. Yeah. Minimum yeah, publishable you just unit. to write another document. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So number 26, I've uh, actually yep. found um, through uh, Elliot pointing at 5704, the kind of an original definition of invariance. And so uh, David's reviewed the pull request. Number 63 talks about that. And I'm thinking that maybe that might, uh, might close the loop on this one. Oh, interesting. I didn't intend for that to happen, but um, the MPLS example is Happy accidents. eliminating. Which PR is that? Can you show it? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, oh, uh, 63. Sorry, sorry. I, I was sharing, a, I'm sharing a tab and I'm not used to Chrome. And so I was looking at it and I didn't realize you guys couldn't see it. Yeah, I, I always go with sharing window for, for that reason, but yeah. Okay. Oh, it actually calls it invariance too. Exactly. <laughs> it's like we didn't have to define this. We can just point there. Good thing you chose the same name. Yeah, that was purely accidental. Yeah. It's there. What? You mean we found a name in networking that actually we use for the right reason? <laughs> Yeah, it's suddenly like, IAP documents. Capsules, packets. Right? Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I, I think this is a fine change. Um, going back to the issue then. Yeah, I, I, I think we should just reference that. I, yeah. Yeah. Very, very lucky you got there. <laughs> you didn't Pure done luck. I don't know if uh, I don't know where the where the term came from originally. I think it might have been Mark Nottingham who, who came up with it. So maybe he had, he had that in his mind. But yeah, yeah. I, I need to drop, unfortunately, for the second half. Have a conflict that sprung up last minute with important people that I couldn't decide to skip. So uh, I'm going to drop. Luckily, uh, Eric can get people to to admit people in and can handle the uh, recording if it drops. So see y'all soon. Thank you. Brilliant. OK. Um, and then, Martin, did you just merge that other guy? I did. And I'm closing that, that issue. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Um, all right. Number 11, I think we can drop, which is RTP, RTCP. There's yeah. a whole, a whole suite of things that are in that space that I, I, if someone was willing to write something up, I'd take it. But yeah. Col Colin, do you have thoughts on this area? Given... Uh, I think STP is a really good example of ossification on a terrible design. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. We're, we're right not supposed now. to say that, though. <laughs> <laughs> It's well known, I think so. I think so, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure there's anything that's unique here uh, that we haven't covered elsewhere. Okay. All right, so we're happy to close. I'll do that and then. Backing claims. <laughs> hmm. Oh, this is old. Um, yeah, I, I think given the amount of work that's happened here, I think we can probably just say um, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll just ask, summarize. ask for re-review. Yeah, I'll just summarize the comment. Um, yeah, I mean, we you know, we can always make sure the introduction says that you know these are principles we believe are the case, and just sort of fudge it slightly. Yeah. 
it already sort of does that. So yeah. I think we're we're okay. Yeah. Yeah. So th and that's one of the things that came up during the IAB open discussion, right? Of people saying like, ah, the applicability of this to other layers, right? Um, I don't know. This, this is not the first time that comment has been made. So, and so that's why the document has that, that text in there already. Yeah, right. Predominantly the higher layers of the network stack. Yeah. I mean, this comes back yeah. to the point from earlier about um, people being willing to actively evolve it. Uh, which point, Colin? Um, you know, the, 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 these techniques make sense when people are, are willing to actively develop and evolve and maintain the protocol. And, and that's easier at certain layers of the stack than at other layers. Right, right. I mean, and I do think the time scale for what it means to evolve and deploy something new is definitely different at different layers, right? Like yeah. your time scale for doing a new IP feature in routers is definitely very, very different than adding a new header in HTTP or mm -hmm. something else. But I, I, I just don't know if it's, it really changes what we say. Here. I, I believe like the general it. principle applies that mm -hmm. you, you have to use um, extension mechanisms actively to actually keep them viable. Um, but the, focus, the document is very focused on higher layers, and that's also very clearly stated in the document. I think that's fine. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, all right, so we have pull requests for a lot of these now. Oh, thank you, Chris. There's, there's um, pr probably examples on the IPv6 uh, hop by hop headers and so on for the lower list. There is a mention of that in the document, but um, ready. Yeah. One of the one of the things that we've learned from that is that we don't know the answer yet, <laughs> and that's really all that we can say. The debate continues. Yeah. All right. Let's have a look at Chris's stuff. Yeah, Chris, what'd you do? Thank you. Um, Which those value which these values if the set of values were clear. Just try to keep it as small as possible. Yeah. Oh Martin, did you take sixty already? Or um uh... Yeah, you took sixty. Yeah. Um views can also vary by But the second change, this is the part that you cut in anyway, right? Sorry, I'm not looking at the text. Uh, it doesn't have, does it, it doesn't have a conflict. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you, oh, but it will when we merge the other one, is what we're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, let's... I think we probably dropped the second edition what what's your, yeah what's your what's your argument for that the the second diff or the second yeah. green that's uh actually oh, yeah. talking about how you would change the order potentially um rather than just stating that the order does matter up above um it, it's fine to drop oh i see yeah I... Not feel strongly. Okay. So I just reviewed it and suggested you remove that and some other text as well. So I think that's probably all right. Okay. Let me just accept those. Uh, and then, Martin, I, I see you updated 62. So I'm going to go ahead and merge that then. Yep. Great. I think, I think then we're done. I, I think um, we can oh, wait, just oh, clean this up. Uh, why does 62 think it thinks it has, has conflict? Want to check that? Yeah, I, I think probably what okay. we can do from here is is move on to other topics and. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah. one more question. I, um, uh, I guess this document is nearly ready. So the next step is actually get approval from the IAB. Um, do we want to reach out and figure out if we can find one or two another IAB members to do another review, or do we think this already had enough review? Anyway. Pr prior to publishing, or so I guess you're yes, asking that because like, that's the next step, right? You, yeah, I, I mean, right. By asking about like a community review or just an IAB internal review. So um, uh, we will put out another call for community feedback anyway. So there should be enough time for reviews if yes, we want okay. to review it. Um, and of course, the IAB will see that this document is on some agenda at some point. So everybody has a chance to look at it. My question is rather, do we want to pick or do we want to find like one or two more people who actually um, ensures that they will do another in-depth review of the document or are we fine with with the amount of review we had so far. I think we've gotten a number of good eyes on it from people, uh, particularly in this last kind of call to the list. I, I'm very happy with the attention we got on it in the reviews. Um, so I, I think just kind of kicking it through the normal process would be OK from my perspective. I don't know if anyone disagrees. I, I don't want to make the process harder. Just, uh... okay. Want to ensure that the IAB members do something for the money they get. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you could you could always uh, ask the IAB members to make a commitment to review during the the comment period. Exactly, exactly. I think that would be. I mean, it, it, for me, it doesn't matter when they review. It's just a question if we want to pick explicitly some people to get to ensure that we get more view there. Yeah, I think, I think it's OK. I mean, even just the calls we've had, like I know like Colin and other people have already been reading through it and commenting, so. Yeah, so there's, there's a bunch of uh, IB members here today. So. Yeah. Um, OK. Cool. All right. Um, Oh, good. Wow, Every, everything is just merging away. Beautiful. Okay. okay, we can move on from this. So, let's see. How do I change? The other thing that was brought forward, and we can talk about this more later to it in another venue, but I, I just wanted to bring it up. Um, do people see uh, what Charles had proposed here? Um, I don't know, Martin, you're not have. Do other people have a chance to just glance over this? Yeah, this is this is one of those interesting things that um, sort of falls into the cracks often, mm -hmm. and I think Charles is suggesting a. Uh, formalism that maybe isn't necessary, but at the same time, um, there's there's a bunch of things that we might want to talk about in this space. I, I'm, I, I wouldn't publish this document, right? But um, for starting a conversation, it's kind of great, and mm -hmm. we should probably ha have Charles on a call for one of these things. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and we'll we'll schedule another one. Um, but I guess just to start I mean, with the people we have here. Um, I don't know, like how, how do you, what do you think practically could be done here? You know, I think, yeah, you could formalize, oh, here's the way to hook up your GitHub um, code. Um, how, how do we think that would actually play out? So, I mean, essentially, you know, how, how do we replicate some of the good stuff we see with Quick of saying, hey, there are a lot of interoperable implementations that are working on this and get that benefit. Yeah, so we saw a few weird things with Quick, but we also saw how quickly those things disappear in terms of um, you know, the, the high energy event. And during that event, people were very proactive and contributing and the interop runner was working and people were actively relying on it. And then uh, people are shipping now and that, that thing broke and no one commented for weeks. 
And so mm. a lot of these things require a, a lot of maintenance and I'm not really sure that we can sort of rely on all of the communities maintaining this sort of thing. Now, maybe the, the, that some groups do. I've seen some really good implementation status sections in RFCs and drafts. I, I think some of those are, those are excellent, but they obviously require a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. did discuss this point um, that, so the implementation section is supposed to be removed before publication uh, as RFC, because what you said, it's like they outdate very quickly. Um, but on the other hand, if you read an RFC, it would be still very useful even just to have a repo open with outdated code, like to have like any kind of pointer. So how do we get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree these things go outdated massively quickly. I, I mean, I, I remember I did the interrupt matrix for RTP back in the day when we went to full standard. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure any of those implementations are still used these days. Um, and I, I, I sort of worry that we'll be pointing to code that's just not, that, that's actively misleading rather than just not useful. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I also worry slightly that if, if we're not careful, we'll, um, we'll run into antitrust issues and that sort of thing if we're pointing at particular implementations rather than indirecting it through some third party that says, you know, there's a community maintained list over here. Yeah, I think those are, that's that's kind of the direction that we have up with. Good base. Yeah. yeah, Quick ended up with that that sort of indirection, and I think it's worked out reasonably well. If you look at the 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 wikis that are maintained on Quick or TLS, that it's just people make their own contributions to the thing, and it turns out to be useful. I think that's all Charles is really asking for here as well. It's just that there's a little more formalism around the. The way that it's set up so that there's um, standard places you can go to look for these things yeah i mean what has changed since publication of um, 7942 is github basically that didn't exist in, in at least that broadly there used to be in like today you can find a lot of things on github um, and getting a connection here is it's the question you know one of the interesting things yeah you know, obviously Charles comes from the background of Hackathon here. And also, you know, Martin, what you're pointing to is that you know, we have these high energy moments where people are engaged and that's when this works well. And then eventually, you know, people ship out and, you know, they have other priorities and they're not going to keep updating these things. Um, I wonder if, you know, to some degree, would it make sense to have these pointers really be to like snapshots that, that are like, like how you have in data tracker, you know, like here was a meeting and then like that was a meeting that happened on this day and it's kind of expired now. And like, here was this interop event and here are the, here's the things that were tested here. You can go look at that snapshot, but it, maybe it's not as misleading. Um, Michael, you have your hand up. Yeah. So I have two things to say about that. Um, one is that, that getting, getting the, the, what, the, what happened at the hackathon out um, and kind of clear is actually actually a lot of work and i've been involved mm -hmm. in quite a few interop events and hackathons and sometimes it, you really don't have any idea and um some some events have been covered by interesting ndas and and mm -hmm. um uh, uh, although the 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 in in hindsight i wish i had known about Ch uh, what is chatham house rules right. um because that's actually really what you really really want right um and um but I'll say this. This is a, a, a. I don't know how to. I don't know how to say this I, I, loud enough to the right people because none of them are in the room, right? Um, that if you think if your company thinks that you're going to eventually implement protocol foo, but only after it becomes RFC, then you're going to miss all of the interop events that actually will make you clueful enough to actually implement it properly. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to say that loud enough to people. You don't have to ship a product, but. Um, you know, that was the case for Ike B2 15 years ago, right? The people that were that in that room in Toronto are the people that have tr products. And the people that weren't in that room, yeah, they still have Ike B1, right? Um, and and it can't be said loud enough. I don't know how to, to do that. But anyway, we, we, we had a, a, I think that that, I think that the 
ITF layer two VPN, which hasn't really worked that well yet. Um, but, but, you know, we got close in March and then we changed the hardware and now it, I haven't got it working again myself, but, um, and Charles has heard all about these things, but we, we actually have a layer two discovery protocol in Anima. And so we actually re really wanted to use it because we wanted to test that. So we couldn't do that. Um, but being able to run that on a ongoing basis, um, is actually mm -hmm. a really, really valuable kind of thing. And the, 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 having people leave their s systems up is valuable and right. also that 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 thing actually you know essentially punches through all their corporate firewalls into the lab right and they can never get things exposed otherwise even if, even if they go to amazon or whatever they still can't think get the right things exposed to test things. oh yeah and yeah, that's um, a huge problem for uh, us testing our quick implementations like we can't run yeah. an ios server on the public internet no well and, and you know and then you have iot devices where you you actually physically need to poke them yeah. You know, with a with a screwdriver to get them to reset and stuff like this. Um, so I think that's a that's a huge valuable thing. And, and uh, you know, I, I read that I read a doc, I read this document a while ago or, uh, you know, like more than a month ago. And I, I, I don't remember it very well. But um, I, I think that that what I'm trying to say is that, as you said, there's this huge, you know, amount of energy. And the trick is not is to harness that and somehow to to get it to persist for a bit longer mm -hmm. right in, into things and make it as cheap as possible for people to persist that um and i think that l2 vpn i think is underappreciated at this point um and i, th I hope that that is something we'll think about as a uh, not just because we're virtual but because we we need to do this uh, on an ongoing basis right yeah and also, so I imagine to make it a bit more available asynchronously so that, you know, you don't have to have everyone in the same room for the particular hackathon event. You know, if you leave it up enough, people can. Well, yeah. So, so that's the, that's part of it. And, and the thing that worked for us two weeks ago was that we only said we we're going to be together for an hour at a time at, you know, the typical 10 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. Um, and so that was a minimum amount of, of disruption to people's time. And we got together and we very clearly, you know, pulled up screen shares to sh look at log files, right? Uh, during that hackathon, we didn't try to do anything else that was, you know, more business or, you know, whatever. We didn't, we didn't edit IDs. We didn't do anything else. We just, we just, we just, it was just a, a, a standing uh, a meeting and, and that was really valuable, but not, no one other than me had tried the, the VPN at that point. So I hope we'll, we'll get it working in September. Uh, Martin, you shared a... Yeah, I shared a link to the original wiki page that we used for, for tracking TLS implementations. And uh, Chris, in his wisdom, has turned it into a repo, um, which is not such a terrible thing, but it also raises the bar to, to contributions, which is an, an interesting question to ask. You know, is, is the wiki with its ease of access and lowering the bar, as Michael would, would have it, is that the the right way to do things, or you know, is the just the, the little 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 bit extra of getting it into a repo um, a problem? Well, well, in the GitHub Markdown Wiki space, they're the same thing, right? It's a <laughs> no because of the way, but the, the barriers to contribution. So um, one of them you have to open a pull request, and the other one you just have to edit the wiki, and there's no permissions. There's no there's no gatekeeper. Okay, but. Oh, I see. Right. So I think that once our super duper ITF wiki is going, that that will be the right answer. I, I do. I do, too. I think that's probably the, the, the right way to do things. Um, this is functionally equivalent in, in very many ways. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. I think right. I think the key will be just to have a, a place where you can put this sort of meta information and the meta information will be a pointer to the wiki page. And then from there, you, you're fine. And you could actually have a spot in here for if someone has a, you know, a, a thing that will respond at an IP address. You could even do that or contact oh, yeah. this person for info. And, uh, oh, yeah, test servers at Why the bottom. Not? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also important to note that, you know, there are examples on here that do not have repos behind them that are accessible. Um, but it is still tracking who has done what. Um, and I, I think th th there is 
you know, meta value for a working group and knowing who has what implemented of what status. Um, yeah, that's that's actually that information there is is variously out of date, as you will see. Uh, I, I think I can agree. list a bunch of those that have complete full standard yeah. implementations, and right. probably a lot of those that claim to have draft implementations don't anymore. So uh, that's the classic problem. Yeah, yeah. Which is why I think there's something attractive about having these things be snapshots in time explicitly and not claiming that they're up to date. Yeah, or at least putting a date when they were last updated on. Yeah. Well, the, the good yeah, thing is the that the wiki about, tracks that. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the interesting thing about this list is just having the links to the actual repos of the code. Right, because as long as those are still accurate, they are the actual sources of truth. Yeah, that's good. Um, all right, so yeah, I think we'll we'll set aside some time at a future call. We'll schedule in September, October, um, so we can have Charles here and talk a bit more about this type of stuff. And then hopefully at that point, we will also have gotten further on publishing Use It or Lose It. And we can talk about, um, I guess, Martin, do we want to talk about um, anything for protocol maintenance? Um, was there anything? That needs to be done there before they get shipped or i think we'll just do one at a time thanks i've got a lot on my yeah, plate for sure cool yeah but i don't want to abuse anyone's time more than more than necessary all right um i think that's it from what i wanted to cover today um other people who have thoughts eric did you want to bring up some of the stuff you're talking about Earlier, um, I don't know. It might it might play into the. Um, uh, I didn't see an IPv6 hop hop options reference in it in the in hmm. document, um, so I don't know what that was about. Um, but briefly, uh, yeah, I, you know, I've been trying to. We had a presentation at, at in Six Man at One Eleven about, uh, hey, what if we just get everybody to? What if we just uh, get people to commit to? Parsing the first 128 bytes of the of a packet, and uh, we will do our our level best to make sure that the L4 header is in there somewhere. And um, with the updated hop by hop, uh, feel free to ignore them guidance. Uh, if we actually make that an official update to 8200, then perhaps we can actually make the space in between the IP header and the L4 header um, useful, and like put in the MTU option. Uh, this, this basically like an MSS rewriting scratch space option. Uh, maybe people could use the connex option so that it's not just um, uh, you know one and a half bits or whatever it is remaining in DSCP. And uh, I mean, Martin is stifling a a laugh. <laughs> I don't know, but like you know, <clears throat> whatever it is, uh, and and maybe you know allow them to be uh, to be uh, sent and. Uh, uh, in various orders, so that there's some some level of like they aren't always in the same format or in the same order thing. Um, then perhaps we could uh, we could get to a place where uh, like, you know like 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 it, like Quick did, where it, you know it had uh, it, it it improved its uh, ability to be sent across the internet by use. Uh, since I think where we are, unless we want to deploy another version of IP. Is that we need to like not let the perfect be the enemy of the good, mm -hmm. um, and focus on deployment of things that are slower, <clears throat> longer, and admittedly less than less than perfect, but still largely useful. That was so actually the the connex option, as you mentioned. It says if you use it, it has to be the first hop by hop ship option. So you, <laughs> I mean, that, uh, that, the, that the way we got this through the six man review is that we promised them to never use it. I guess but <laughs> that's what's in the draft uh, in the RC. Uh, yeah. So actually, I haven't read that um, in in detail, but that that very point did come up because the current proposal for a hop by hop option treatment says that. Uh, Rooters should only process. Rooters are required to only process the first hop by hop option in the chain, 
which would sort of like nullify any sort of future usefulness unless we made like one mega hop by hop option that had a bunch of other to sort of work around that limitation. Um, we put so I think there's obviously there a lot. So, so, sorry, say again, Michael. Put another IP header in there too. That's right. You could get two packets for the price of one. It could be could be bandwidth saving across uh, uh, satellite links. You know, when you have a limited transmission schedule. Um. Anyway, this was uh, <laughs> this was this is what uh, uh, you uh, I was mentioning to you, Tommy, and I've been talking yeah. to, to Warren about. And so I think like some of these some of the some of the right pieces are floating around, uh, and. Um, I don't know if they will they will gel into anything useful or not, but I, I feel like they could. Yeah, it sounds like you're at the honeymoon phase, and it's it sounds promising. It's good. Yeah. I think it's, it's what, interesting experimenting. Like, would what are going to be all the challenges you face with how authentic things are in deploying? There are many. I mean, you, you've got to deploy. The, this thing before it can be be relied upon to any reasonable extent. That has to be deployed pretty widely, right? Well, one of the other things that that uh, might be required for this to be of interest, or that could be sufficiently interesting to make it useful, and I think, yeah, two minutes, um, is that it might be necessary to do a, a, a fragmentation v2 header, where we actually have in the fragment header uh, the L4 header, or some some, you know, Per per transport layer specifiable chunk of, of bytes, that that might be useful. Uh, wow. So, yeah. Obviously, obviously, pretty wacky stuff. I get it. Yeah. Well, the okay. crazy thing is that you can do the wackiest and most insane things, uh, but if everyone agrees, it's not insane. Oh. Yeah. Um. I guess we, what I'd be curious about having experienced, you know, how we try to get out things like TFO and everything else. Um, so if you tried to do this, what type of heuristics would you need to make it actually work and fall back? Like, how would you know when it's safe to do it or not as an endpoint? Yeah, I think one of the things that Quick relied upon was, hey, we'll just fall back to TCP. Right, and so you could always follow back to not doing this uh, once you detect right. this. Yeah, but it's going to require a lot more ongoing measurement intelligence in a, in, a, in a node to observe things that work and remember them and observe when like something else in the path changed and note that too. Right. Uh, so it's going to be your path. fairly non-trivial. The, tra the tragedy here is that as soon as you define that fallback, basically no one's going to bother it's going to be the thing everyone uses. So unless the unless it didn't the happen with quick though. Well, so but I don't. What is happening in enterprises, where yeah. UDP is commonly blocked, right? So at that level, they're not even deploying TLS one point three a lot of the time for this reasons, yeah. right? Yeah, so, and I, I wonder if you know one of the principles here is like Quick's original breakage wasn't that bad like it didn't have to fall back to tcp you know, like what it was it was maybe above 10 percent initially or something but it was not the majority of cases and so maybe it's different to say all right i'm broken 20 percent of the time but 80 percent of the time i work therefore it's good enough and i can fall back for the 20 percent. but if you're starting the other way and you only work 20 percent of the time um it may have a very different way it plays out but 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 think of it from a project manager deciding what code to do right oh we're at the end yeah yeah we're at the end we where, where, where am i going to fix bugs and the answer is well the part that's 80 percent, right exactly exactly okay so then you're going to rip out the 20 percent when it's buggy whichever one that is right okay right. that's too buggy forget it the other one's working and that's where i think we run into problems right if if it's you're right anyway cool well, this is where i worry about the the perfect being the enemy the good perfect. kind of thing yeah. is there there are many things that are that are good enough for lots of good situations, but uh, knowing when and, and just how are obviously much harder questions. All right. Well, even though Martin 
your meeting to get moved. I think we will wrap up this session. Um, thank you all for chatting. And Miri, I guess we will just uh, kick off. Well, I guess we'll we'll rev user lose it one more time, and then we'll kick the process off. All right. Yeah. There's there's one more pull request sitting there. Um, yeah. I'll, if, I'll if you have a time to look at that, it's big. So I'm, I don't need to take it, but I'd like your okay. opinion on. Um, All right, I'll, I'll check it before the end of the day today. Oh, thanks. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Talk to right. you later. I will attempt this stop recording thing.